try to do my part in the Master's service tonight, trying to help his people along the way. I'm sure that everybody's here for that purpose, to try to pray and to help someone to get close to God or to be healed if they're sick, afflicted, and weary. And we're very happy when we heard that so many of them last evening was healed. Right at the end of the service, it seemed to be rather a great clap of faith. I trust it'll be that way tonight. If anything greater and more will be healed. There's many that get healed that maybe we can't call them right out from the platform here. But a few days, you'll be noticing that like stomach trouble. It's gone. Heart trouble. It is no more. You just go far for faith. It's what heals them. They have faith, believing God. And now, tonight, just to put as much time, just a little late, just as much time as I can on, on praying for the sick, the ministers through the daytime here, they speak and teach concerning faith and how to receive faith. As myself, I'm not a preacher. I just, uh, I sent to pray for the sick. I spend my time in prayer all through the day. I must do it in order to meet the obligation of the night. It quickly takes the life from me, fasting and praying. Someone said not long ago said to me, said, Brother Branham, when do you ever rest? I don't get any. But I will have rest one day if I live true and faithful when I cross the river on the other side. I hope that God will have a place there that I can rest. A person who lives their life for their self lives a selfish life. We must live for others. Bear you one another's burdens and fulfill so the law of Christ. And we got to have a feeling for one another. And therefore, when you do all you know how to do, and when you do lay down at night, well, you have the consolation of knowing that you, you tried your best. I can't make everyone believe that's impossible. Jesus couldn't do that when he was on earth. And I know just be a few that believe. But if anything I can add to help the gospel, that's my duty of being here to try to help somebody along the way. Tonight, just speak to you for a few moments, just in order to kind of get this settling down of the Spirit. I'm sure you all appreciate that dealing here amongst people, it's, um, I guess they said the tent seat of 4,000 is good. 3,500 people in the tent tonight. Then there's 3,500 souls, 3,500 spirits. And as you're looking this way, and it's and the condition I'm in at this time, it, I, it feels you can tell it. It's a great pull. Many people have faith. Sometimes I try to catch those who are back in the audience way back from me. But there comes such a, I guess I would call it crossfire. This side believing, that side believing, this and pulling, that and pulling. You can't hardly discern. And I've asked my manager, if they'll get all the sick and afflicted like this right up around me here, so that I won't have any interference. Many of you might wonder why the people leave the platform at night. That's coming both ways then, you see. It's hard. You can't detect where it's coming from. And you just single that person out. You can watch it just a few moments or get close in contact with it. It usually brings forth a vision that tells the people what's wrong with them. I don't know what's wrong with anyone. I only have to, many times when the people come, I just don't try to use my own mind. It is always speaks out and tells what's wrong. Or if I usually, instead of looking, I see something of somebody before me, maybe keep standing before me, that person, I go look around and see where it's at. And I, I find, then when I find the person, I, I know where it's at. I'm looking right now for someone that was I've seen this afternoon. But I don't know where they're at. I haven't found them yet. I'll see them in the audience without out after a while. Never fails on that. But I, it'll be here somewhere. It's a lady packing a little baby with heart trouble. 
and I, I'll find it somewhere. And it's in the room that shows just where it's at and what it looked like and all about it. And I come in sometime and look for that person. And when, when I see the person, then I'll know them. Sometimes in the meeting, while it's going on, I see someone raise up and it's, I see the vision standing before me. I look to see where the person is and I watch the way they act and then just tell just exactly what I see to them. And when the person's standing before me, it's just like as if this gentleman sitting here with his, with a brown, with his coat on, or jacket on. If I would tell him, if he comes to the platform and I never seen him before in my life and tell him just like I was talking to him, I seen him sitting somewhere and I see a lady sitting near him with a yellow dress on and so forth, I just talk just the way I'm seeing it, just like that. And then when someone with a disbelief or a haughty spirit that interferes with that, now you might not want to believe that, Christian friend, but that's the truth. And it's, it's not something new. It's the gospel through the age. Jesus, when he went in to raise Jairus' daughter, he put them all out of the house. Many times that way. He took a man one time to the hand and let him outside the city away from the crowd. Took him to one side and talked with him. He talked with the woman, at the, the Samaritan woman at the well, sent the disciples away. He knew she was coming and began to speak to her and then went right direct. After he come in contact, after talking to her, if you notice many times at night, I'll draw the attention of somebody and start talking to them, especially on the platform. They'll be speaking to them. First, I have to get the contact of their soul. And then when it begins to vibrate against you, then the power of the Holy Spirit just discerns right out down to the right, and you see the picture of it before you. And now, you might think, well, that's psychology. Well, if it is, Paul would use it when he looked up on a man said, I perceive you have faith to be healed. Stand up on your feet. And it is psychology in one way. It's the mind of Christ in the Christian moving. See, it's not our mind, not our psychology, but the power of Christ, his mind, lets the mind of Christ be in you. See? And then that moves out and it knows, not the man, but Christ knows. Now, I want to read just a few words, and we'll get started praying by 4 or 9 o'clock if possible. As I say, all... No meeting is complete without first reading the Word. And now all that I don't get to in the daytime and the nighttime praying for, I've got a brother here. He watches me. And when he, I can't tell it myself, but when he sees the first week he's come, he'll come take me from the platform. But don't hold it against my brother, you see. He's only trying to protect me. And um, so I just can stand so much. And, uh, and it, my whole strength leaves me. I hate to say that, but what's truth is truth, and it, it just the life goes right away from you. Because you, it's anointing of a different person, something besides man, and he's the one that does the work. I mean, have they showed the picture of him yet? I want, have you, Brother Lindsay? Oh, I beg your pardon. Brother Lindsay hasn't the picture. Brother Lindsay's going to try to bring it to short, maybe tomorrow night. How many would like to see him? He'll tell you the story of it. It's been a debate. Hard to say today. I do not debate. I don't argue with no one. If, if God doesn't study my points, then they're untrue. But if God says they're right, all right. I don't believe in arguing, debating, fussing about things. But everybody has their own opinion. God will judge us all. And a minister in Houston, Texas, challenged me on the scripturalness of divine healing being in the Bible taught for this day. I would not, I had nothing to say into it at all. And they, they, of course, they keep me away in the room because I must be by myself and pray through the day. After that, I don't see visions. I don't see what's going to happen. And then that day, I've been in prayer, and reporters, newspaper reporters, I do not talk to reporters. My managers talk to reporters newspaper reporters and magazines and so forth. And so not as I have anything against them. It's just that I must spend my time with him if I must meet his people. And I know 
if I was coming to you to pray for me, I want you to be sincere and at your best to pray for me if I was sick. And do unto others you'd have them do unto you. And so uh, Mr. Bosworth, Dr. Bosworth, I practically everybody here knows him. How many know Brother Bosworth? But, yeah, but he's a dear old Christian man, I'll tell you. He's one of the managers of the meeting, just as sweet and gospel writing as he can be. And I just love him with all my heart. And he was the manager in the meeting at, at Houston at that time. And we were at the, uh, the big Coliseum there, where they was going to have the whole Texas Centennial and so forth. And we just had a few nights to be in there. And this Baptist minister, Dr. Bett, the Baptist Tabernacle of Texas, he made the challenge and put it in the paper and said, if I didn't come and debate it with him, that I was afraid to take up for what I believed. And he knew then that I didn't believe it. Well, that was just Satan trying to work on me. So I, I wasn't going to argue with him. And he kept on, he put the paper the next day, he said, well, that shows that you're, they can't back up what they talk about, these Pentecost people and holy rollers and so forth, that they can't back up what they're talking about. So Mr. Bowser, he's about 73, but that was just too much for him. He couldn't stand that. He said, better than let me go over there. Mr. Best is a young man, about 30. And I said, Brother Bosworth, you may go if you don't argue. He said, I'll not argue. So they called the debate, and the papers all carried headlines and everything. And that's what I think about the holiness people, or the full gospel people. Then you may differ a little in your churches on different one believe this, and on baptisms and different things you might differ on. But when it comes really to the showdown, they're one in heart. They'll, someday this old petition's going to be taken away, and then we'll be one, right? God grants the day quickly. And all of them that's born again in the kingdom of God, they're brothers and sisters. They may argue like a little family, like boys and brothers, and fat one another, but we're all God's children when we're born again. And there they come flying hundreds and hundreds of miles by plane, trains, and everything comes special when you see in the paper that I was in a debate. And that, that night, Mr. Best hired a, a photographer to come over, a member of the uh, uh, American Photographers Association, and he came over and said, I want you to take six pictures of me while I'm just beating that old man to pieces with the gospel. So the photographers came over to take it, and I knew he'd have an awful time on that because Mr. Bob was quiet as he could be, come to the platform, and Mr. Best was a roaring and a going on. So he just asked the question, is that the attitude of the Baptist Church, the Baptist Conference, or was that the attitude of Mr. Best alone? I was rocked in a Baptist cradle myself. I know the Baptists believe in divine healing. So I knew that wasn't the attitude of the Church, but I, I knew it must have been his personal. So he had to admit that it was his personal attitude. So there was many, many thousands of people gathered that night, just packed the big place in. Then uh, I got up in the third balcony. I wasn't going, but I thought then I would go, and I stood up in the third balcony. And Mr. Bowser said, I just asked Mr. Best one question. Was the redemptive names of Jehovah applied to Christ? If you'll answer that, that's all. If he was Jehovah Rapha, he was Jehovah Manassas. And if he wasn't, then we looked for another Savior, so that's that of it. So there was nothing everybody would get to rise the man and clap his their hands, and he got up there and tried to preach a little bit on something, and he just so much, he, he couldn't even do it. He's just so tied up and mixed up. The poor old brother Bosworth really <laughs> done a wonderful job that night, just as cool as he could be, just standing there looking at him. Many of us to have a little puddle at the last, and this Mr. Best kept saying, let me see this miracle worker. And Mr. Bosworth said, brother Dan doesn't seem to be no miracle worker. But I'd like to see him come forth and perform. He said he doesn't clown for people. <laughs> And just like that. But he spends his time praying. And he said, well, I'd like to see him. Just kept on like that. Mr. Bosworth said, well, he's in the building. If he wants to come to the platform, all right. And sitting there, up there with my brother and with the four guards that take me in with the wife and baby. And just then, I felt something just come down over me. I raised up and started back. When I walked to the platform, I said, I have preached to many million of people, direct or indirect. Literature has traveled the world. I've preached to 4,000 by radio and by a person 
There was one time that I called myself a divine healer. I said, I'm not a divine healer. Preaching divine healing doesn't make you a divine healer no more than preaching salvation makes you a divine savior. If you preach salvation, that makes you a divine savior. Preaching divine healing makes you a divine healer. I said, no, I, I do not claim that. I said, I only make my statements, and if I make my statements, and if they're true, then God will say they're true, and God will back them up. And if I tell false something false, then God will not honor anything false. He'll always honor the truth. I said, I tell the truth, and God knows the truth. And by that time, while the glory of the Holy Spirit came down, and there had to be the photographer standing there shot a picture, and he almost had a heart attack when he found out it's come into meeting many times like a big whirl of fire through these. Here not long ago, I was baptizing several thousand people standing watching in the month of August down at the foot of Spring Street in Jeffersonville, and here it come down out of the sky, visible before around 10,000 people, moved down where the standing of all screaming from it. Hundreds fainted on the bank. The papers carried great articles. Mystic style appears over minister while baptizing. One night while speaking in a building, I was had about 3,000 people sitting out like this, about 2,000 up. And I started to pray for the, a little boy, the first one, which was a crippled case. His little feet was drawn up like this with polio. I was holding the little fellow in my arms and was praying. And while I was praying, the light got real bright in my face. And I said to myself, the custodian must have turned the light on up there had run a show there in this place. I thought, well, that's legitimate. It's uh, strange that a man would... Do that, that's not even being a gentleman, let alone a Christian, would turn a light to someone's face while praying. I just kept on praying, got brighter and brighter, and everyone very reverent with their heads down. I raised my head, come floating down through the room, came the morning star, coming right up to where I was. I was holding little baby, it settled right down to where I was. I don't know where I dropped it or what happened, but when it hit the floor, its little feet that was crooked like this come down straight. The mother sitting on the front, she raised her head and began screaming and fainted and fell over on the floor. The little boy started running off the platform, hollering to his mother. And there was a Nazarene girl playing the baby grand piano sitting right now. Nazarene people are a little emotional. Is any Nazarenes in here? Let's see your hands. Surely there's some Nazarene somewhere. That's fine. Well, they got enough religion to shout once in a while, you know. So they were sitting, this girl was a very attractive young blonde-headed girl sitting playing the piano. And when she looked and seen that, she just threw up her hands and turned real white and began screaming to the top of her voice, for she was an intimate friend to the people, and run away from the planet piano, and she was playing that hymn, The Great Physician, Now He's Near, You've Heard It. And right there, as soon as she ran away, before around 5,000 people, them ivory keys kept moving, The Great Physician, Now He's Near, The Sympathizing Jesus, He Speaks to Drooping Hearts This Year, No Other Name But Jesus. Played not just a word or two, but the whole thing through like that. Hundreds began pouring to the altar, screaming with their handkerchiefs, crying, God have mercy on me, a sinner. And so it's come many times. And so in that night, when they had taken a picture of it, a lot of times it said it was psychology. But the man who had taken it was an Orthodox Jew. His name is Ted Kipperman. Mr. Iris was a Roman Catholic. Been standing there making fun, put a piece of paper that they before that, just before I said I was a hypnotizer, and made all kinds of remarks and insulting about it. He almost had a heart attack, too. Try, tried to get into the Rice Hotel, of course, they wouldn't let him in where was that. The next morning, they flew the picture away to Washington, D.C. for a copyright. Before it could be released, it had to go before the FBI examination. And when they did, they went and got the best George J. Lacey, the best there is in the United States. And he kept it for two or three days. And to see if there's any touch up or anything was wrong. My picture, but when he brought it out, he said, well, it was perfectly right at the light was there that struck it and gave a great light up at each one. They had to go with each picture like that. There it is, visible. They asked me if I wanted to sell it. I said, no, sir. If Jesus Christ, the Son of God, thought enough of me to stand on my side to have his picture taken, I think enough of him not to sell it. See? And so I said, I never, and so I, I turned it over to the studios, let them do what they wish with him. And they said they'd have to get something out of it. I had them to say that they would sell it so that whatever poor person could, could get a hold of it if they wanted. And uh, the first time Mr. Lacey said it was the first time in all human history that uh, a 
supernatural being was ever photographed. They said it's this, um, that it's been said a lot of times of those lights around the saints and the unbelievers say, well, some artist painted that picture, but said it surely must have been there for that uh, optical lens, mechanical lens of a camera won't take psychology. It was, it was there. And I'm very thankful tonight to know that that same pillar of fire and, and cloud, whatever it is, they'll show you the picture pretty soon and maybe they may get some here for the service. And if they do, you'd be more than welcome to them. And I'm so thankful to know that I have a part to be numbered with you people. The great Church of God is standing today for the full gospel and for righteousness and for the power of the Holy Spirit in this last day. I'm thankful for you. And thankfully, God has given me the opportunity to be numbered with you, to be called your brother and sister, uh, to, uh, you and I, brother and sister. Now, along the journey, it's been so many things happened to us. It's been remarkable. Many things that's beyond what I would know to say here in the building. Great m miracles and things, and each night I'll try to read a little scripture and tell you something from now on to a service is out. And now it's time for me to go to praying for the sick. I have some 45 minutes now to have the service. And now all that I do not get to tonight with prayer cards, I guess is around 100 in here now with prayer cards. And if I don't get to too many tonight, then tomorrow night, why, or tomorrow afternoon, Brother Lindsay and Brother Hall will be praying for the rest of them that has, has got the cards left. We'll begin tomorrow afternoon. Come out to the afternoon service and hear these men. If you get instructions to know how to receive Christ, here, only release it right here. The gift of God will drive it from you. Right? But in order to obtain and remain with it, you must have faith to believe and just keep. I've seen people come to the platform that was totally blind, couldn't even see their hands before them. And in less than five minutes, take this same Bible and read a chapter out of it. And so three or four days more, come right back just as blind as he was in the first place. They get out amongst unbelievers and get out and let Satan stand right. If you can read it here before the gift, you can read it out there anywhere, for God covers the whole earth. Just keep faith in him. You say, well, that's strange. No, it isn't, gospel preacher. I felt that resented just a little bit. But I remember spiritual things are spiritually learned. A man can be here tonight and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and be a real Christian right here tonight and tomorrow be a real Christian and a week from now be in a barroom drunk. Isn't that right? It's when he loses faith in God and goes back. Same thing is by healing. The only thing you can ever get from God is by faith. And the reason I say that they'll be delivered here are uh, either told what's wrong with them and told the reason why that they can't be is because I believe what he told me is the truth and for these years he stood by and I know he will now. It's because I believe it. Just believe it just with all my heart and soul and body and mind. And you believe it. And then if your number is called tonight in the prayer line, and if God reveals your heart and speaks to you and gives you deliverance here, don't you never have no kind of testimony, only he heals you. Because if you do, if you one time testify to the, uh, to the other side, the negative side, it'll come back you worse than it ever was. Just remember, if you can't accept it on those bases, don't come at all. See? Don't come at all. Because it would be embarrassing here before the audience anyhow to be told that. And so don't come at all. Because the Bible said, go and sin no more, or a worse thing will come up on you. See? Go and sin. Now, sin is unbelief. Is that right? The first sin was committed by Eve because she disbelieved God's word. Is that right? That's where the whole thing lays tonight, disbelieving God's word. You believe God's word as it's written here? You don't need nothing else. But to stimulate people's faith, God sends gifts down that magnifies his word, that speaks of his word. And if any gift or any angel or anything doesn't speak directly, by the word of God, it is not the right kind of angel. That's right. It is not the right angel. But if it speaks and testifies of Jesus Christ and speaks according to the scripture, then it is of God. 
That's what First John 4 says. Now, I wish to read just some of the words. And St. Mark, the fifth chapter, or St. Luke, rather, the fifth chapter, then we'll have prayer, and then start in the prayer line. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, or would you love to have been there? He stood by the lake and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little into from the land and sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down for the drop. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we've toiled all night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the net. May God add his blessing to this scripture. I just, just a comment, just a moment. He had been healing and preaching. I would love to have seen him, wouldn't you, when he walked so lovely, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, with no beauty we should desire, probably small in statue, delicate-looking man, a beautiful man, the Bible times with one big, wide shoulders and strong build. But there was no beauty that we should desire him, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. But he didn't look like much, but oh, what was in him. And he went out to the lakeside to preach. And when he did, all the people come down to hear him. I can imagine seeing Peter sitting on a stump after pulling the nets all night, discouraged, and sat down there and said, let's see what that fellow's got to say. But when he began to speak, there was something different. He spoke different from any other man. I just see him moving up just a little closer all the time. And the crowd got great. I can hear him get into the boat, thrust out a little from the bank, and he borrowed a ship from Simon. After he got through speaking, he said to Simon, Now you launch out into the deep and let down for the draw. Jesus never borrows nothing from you but what he will pay you back a hundredfold. Is that right? Whatever he, let him have your faith tonight. The little boy had come by one time with some fishes in his hands. There's 5,000 people staying there or more. Now, the little boy had five fishes. It wasn't very much in his hands. But, oh, my, when it was put into the master's hands, what it could do. It said 5,000 in the master's hands. And what little you have tonight, just give it into the hands of the master. Then launch out into the deep and let down. Peter said, Lord, we toiled all night and taken nothing. That's discouraging. They were fishermen. They just wasn't guessing. They know where the sea and how the moon should be and where the fish was that raised on that sea. Galilee. And they toiled all night through that same water and hadn't taken a thing. But it said, Lord, at thy word, I'll let down the net. There's a secret. You've been maybe sane through every doctor's office there is in the country. You might have been through prayer lines. You might have had your pastor praying. You might have consecrated Christians to pray. You might have tried everything that you know how to do. But tonight, at, at thy word, Lord, I'm going to let down the net right now. I'm going to stop trying anything. I'm just going to believe you right now and take it your word. I'm going to let down the net. And it won't be long when you're pulling to your field a tug. And the net will be full of fishes, joy, salvation, healing. Blessings from God. There's the lady I'm looking for. Sitting right here. She's got on a checkered dress. Has your baby got heart trouble, lady? You are just weeping there. If it is, raise up your hand. If that isn't right, raise up your hand. So, yes, ma'am. All right. Don't fear no more. Your baby will be all right now. I've seen it today. I just happened to turn. I felt something pulling to me. Wasn't well, you praying just then, sister, or something? Are you the father of the child sitting there by? Yes, sir. I, uh, you're from a distance away from here, aren't you? Didn't you come somewhere away from here? And you have to return back, do you? And 
And you take your baby now. Don't worry. That was it. It's cleaned out. You have the hand. So the little baby will be all right now. Have no fear. For God has answered your prayer. He just answered. God bless you. Uh, oh, isn't he wonderful? I know the lady had on kind of a check dress, and I kept looking at this lady sitting here, and I couldn't see no baby. But the lady was supposed to have a little baby in her arms, with this little, like that, a little, little ball hair like baby. And I was looking for it to see if someone I looked for babies, and the baby cried back there a while ago, and her mother picked it up and started out. I looked close, and it wasn't that baby, but I know it was here somewhere. All right, God will just pray. He'll speak to me, and he'll tell me what to tell you. Let us pray now. Oh, Father, you're so sweet and full of love and compassion. And I know that you're here and you love us all. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but would have everlasting life. Oh, how true that thou art the rock that was in the wilderness. Moses smote the rock, and it gave forth its waters to a dying, perishing people. And as the rock was in the wilderness, so is it with us today, already smitten, waters of salvation gushing out to a perishing, dying, sin-loving people. Come unto me, all ye that labor, heavy laden. Come to me, all ye ends of the world, and drink. Be satisfied. We thank thee for thy love, that you loved us while we were aliens, alienated from God, cut off without mercy, sinners by nature, going to a Christless grave and a godless eternity. And Christ died for our sins in our stead and has went before God now with our sins as a sin offering. To be made an offering for us, taking our place, and his soul was put in hell. But it was not possible that his holy ones should see corruption, so he raised him again after three days. Oh, and he's a high priest tonight, sitting there making intercession with his own blood. He's entered before the Master. And tonight it does not appear what we shall be, but we know we'll have a body like his, or we shall see him as he is. We believe that soon, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, move tonight in sweet love and compassion upon your people. Heal every one that's sick and needy. Break up the hearts of the haughty. He that goeth forth sowing in tears will doubtless return again rejoicing, bringing with him precious seed. Mold us and make us after thy own will. Let all the unsaved, and may they somehow tonight, by the word or by the Spirit of God, be convinced that they're wrong and come humbly and give their hearts to thee. May all the sick be healed, for we ask it in the name of thy beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. All right, then. From a hundred to... From, from 50, from 1 to 100, and A. Start about, how many did we run last night? 15? 1 to 15. That was going to place. What takes from 85 back to 100? Those tonight was prayer cards from A85 to A100. From A85 to A100, stand in line to my right of the platform and your left. Everyone else remain seated, please. While the prayer line is forming, I want to show you this picture that we happen to get a hold of just now. When the Brother Branham was talking about, which shows the supernatural light over his head. As soon as that picture was taken, I made arrangements to have the negative taken to the examiner of question documents, uh, Mr. George Lacey of Houston, Texas. And I asked him 
I said, you have all the means of science at your command. Can you tell me if there's any fake about that uh, particular negative? Can you tell if there's a superimposure? Can you tell if there's been a double exposure? Can you tell if the film has been doctored with in any way? He says, absolutely, I can. So he took it, cost us a considerable sum because he was a scientist engaged in that work, and examined it many hours in his laboratory, and then with his own name signed underneath it, he declared that the negative was absolutely, absolutely positively genuine. May I just add this word? The picture was taken by a hostile photographer, one that had spoken against the meeting. In fact, the, the statement even got in the newspaper. And he was as surprised as anyone. There were Jews, Orthodox Jews, and so I regard this merely as a verification and confirmation. And Brother Branham regards it, not that he is supernatural in any way, but a verification of his ministry and message of bringing divine healing to the people of the world. Friends, I believe the Bible is true. So tonight, as Brother Branham ministers, may we all be in the Spirit of God and realize that the supernatural is here tonight to deliver people, not only heal them, but to heal their souls, bring men and women to Jesus Christ. Now let us sing that chorus, Only Believe. Only believe. Shall we stand? I wouldn't stand in somebody's way that did believe in it. 
I wished I had faith like some of the patriarchs. We may not all be able to be translated like Elijah. We may not be able to stop the sun like Joshua. We may not be able to take an afternoon stroll like Enoch did and just walk home with God without even, without even tasting death. We may not be able to do that, but let's not, let's not stand in somebody else's way that can. All right. Everyone be reverent. I guess you wonder why I take that watch off. Have you noticed that? Vibration stop that watch dead still. I've got one in the shop now, a long jean, someone gimme. I don't know what force it has to it, but it stops the watch. Now, everyone be in prayer and bring your patience. You now, you down here without prayer cards, just keep looking this way and believing with all your heart. How do you do, sister? Is this a double microphone? Did you want one of them? Or, or maybe it's better? No, it's what other one? No, the other one right. works. Now, the prayer cards is merely to keep the line lined up. That's all for everyone. Won't rush in and give just a fair chance to everyone. We can keep them lined. But now, it is necessary to have the card if you just believe. Let's just pray once more, if you will. I, Father, I, I ask thee to be near now as we realize that your guidance will have to be what will take care of for the night. Now, we realize that we're an eternity-bound people. We're bowing our head to the dust from whence we were taken and someday shall return. If Jesus doesn't come soon. And we realize that somewhere thousands of years from this night, our souls will be in eternity somewhere. And we're here with the deepest of sincerity to try to bring the gospel in the way that we know it, the gospel, the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, to the people, although misunderstood many times. But, Father, I pray that you will grant tonight that many may believe and help your humble servant to be able to discern the diseases and the causes of the people. Thank you for the healing of that darling little baby that we knew. Thou knowest all things in what you said. It wouldn't live for a little while longer, but now it has life. We're so thankful that you answered the prayer of that dear mother and made it manifest. Years to come, she'll remember the blessing. Now help me, Father, as I challenge the enemy, realizing that I'm allergic to those things as we all are, but I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will enclose around every one of us and may not be able to enter anywhere but be cast out into outer darkness waiting for utter destruction in the last days. Help me, Father, for I go forward now to challenge as a representative of Jesus Christ. In his name I ask this. Amen. Good evening. Come forward, Justin. Yeah, have your hand, Justin. Now look this way. You're trying hard to believe, aren't you? You're wanting to believe. Love him with all your heart. Now, what it is now is trying to get your faith into the spot. I know what's wrong with you now, but I want to get you to a place where you can really be able to be healed. Be well. That's what you desire. You realize that the only hope you have is in Christ, is as long as you fool with this and doctor with this, there's no hope unless you do find Christ. In 
find mercy with him. Now, you, what do you think he would do if he's standing here with my suit on? He'd tell you what was wrong with you. Lay his hands over on you, perhaps, and say, Mother, be of a good curse. But he went up on high, sent it on high, and gave gifts back to man. You believe that? Now, what you're thinking, now, I'm not reading your mind, but what you're thinking is what am I going to tell you? Well, your trouble is stomach trouble at the bottom. Isn't that right? I see you refusing foods and things, and sometimes you get so hungry and want to eat. Certain things you can have and certain burns. A nerve condition has been told because it's causing an ulcerated condition, and you have a gallbladder seepage to that. You had another trouble that's bothered you. You've been getting weak lately, too, haven't you? The afternoon's getting real weak. I see you lying down. He was praying just before coming to this meeting that something had happened here. Kneeling by the side, yes, ma'am. I've seen you where you were standing looking towards the wind at sea. Isn't that right? I'm, I'm just seeing it as I'm telling you as the seat shuttle. Isn't that true, Mother? Now, when I said that last word, something swept over you, Dad. Went over you. Had a strange feeling to strike you. That's when your faith heals you. You haven't got any trouble now. Jesus Christ, for I love you here. With one prayer, in this audience, I'm going to ask God to remove every affliction and every sickness in the audience. I believe you'll do it, don't you? All right. I want you to pull your canes down, get up out of the wheelchair, whatever it is, and walk. Hey, Father, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, move in this audience now. I rebuke every demon 